In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do the crunch stitch so you can learn how to do the crunch stitch if you have never done the crunch stitch before or if you haven't worked with the crunch stitch very often and you just want to um, have a refresher on how to do the crunch stitch, then this is the perfect tutorial for you to watch today to get ready to do part two of the baby cardigan because for the baby cardigan, we do use the crunch stitch for the body of the sweater and for the sleeves. We also use it for the baby hat and we also use the crunch stitch for the little baby booties that match the set. The newborn cardigan sweater, I did use Bernat Baby Sport Yarn and for this tutorial I'm going to use a 4-ply worsted weight acrylic yarn. That way you can see the um, stitches a little bit better um, because for the cardigan that's a thinner yarn than this one. But for the tutorial I wanted you to be able to see the stitches a little bit more clearly as I show you how to do the crunch stitch. So we're going to start off with a slip knot. And you want to work a crunch stitch in multiples of two. Go ahead and chain 12. Because we're just going to do a small little square so I can show you how to do the crunch stitch. And we'll do a few rows. Um, that way you can see the nice texture um, that this makes when you have several rows of this stitch worked. Okay, so I'm going to chain 12. Okay, so I made 12 chains. And I'm going to start my work in the second chain from the hook. I'm going to skip the first chain that's closest to the hook. I'm going to start my hook into the second chain. And I'm going to do a slip stitch. Okay, so there's my slip stitch. Into the next stitch, I'm going to do a half double crochet. So I'm going to wrap my yarn, insert it into the chain, pull up a loop. You'll have your three loops. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that's your half double crochet. The next chain, a slip stitch. Next chain, we'll do a half double crochet. Next chain, slip stitch. Next chain, a half double crochet. Next stitch, a slip stitch. And then the next one, a half double crochet into the next chain. You can see what we're doing here. We're alternating between slip stitches and half double crochets. And we'll do that all the way down to the last chain. Okay, so we just did a half double crochet. The next stitch will be a slip stitch. And then a half double crochet into the next chain. And then into the last chain, we're going to do a slip stitch. Now, if you recall, when we began this row, we started with the slip stitch. So we want to end with the slip stitch and that's what we did. So, that, so now we're ready to begin row two. So to begin row two, we are going to chain two. We're going to turn our work. Now this chain two will count as a half double crochet. Now you can see into this next stitch, we're going to do a slip stitch. So this is the churning chain, which is going to count as the first half double crochet. So we're not going to work right into that first stitch. We just ended with the slip stitch. So we're not going to work into the slip stitch since this chain two counts as our first stitch. That's our churning chain. Okay, so now the very next stitch is going to be a half double crochet that was from the previous row. So to, the way you can look at them, the way you can tell where the half double crochets are from the previous row is do you see the stitch here where there's like a little slanted line that slants downward? And then the next half double crochet, you can see it again. It's that line that slants down right at the top of the stitch. Those are the half double crochets. And then in between, there's a little stitch there. That's the slip stitch. So we're going to be working slip stitches into the top of the half double crochets from the previous row. And we'll work half double crochets into the slip stitches from the previous row. So let's go ahead. This is a half double crochet, so we're going to do our slip stitch. Now we're not going to insert a hook underneath that slanted line. That is part of the stitch. We, we want that to be there, and that's how we're going to get that nice texture. We don't want to work underneath that. We're going to work right above that, making sure that you insert your hook right underneath the front and back loop of the V stitch. So you can always check if you um, inserted your hook correctly because you should just have the front and the back loop of the stitch. If you insert your hook underneath that 
slanted line, then what would happen is you would have three loops on your hook. So that's how you can kind of tell if you insert it incorrectly. And I wanted to go over this in case you're really new to crochet, or if you're a beginner. I just wanted to show you how you can recognize where to insert the hook or if you inserted it incorrectly. So that's how you'll be able to tell. If you see three loops on that hook, then you know that you inserted it in the wrong place. So you want to make sure that you're inserting it above that slanted line that slants downward. Just right underneath the stitch, just like that. And then do your slip stitch. So we did a slip stitch into the top of that half double crochet. And then the next half double crochet is right here. And the reason why um, I wanted to point that out, because the stitch right in between is a slip stitch. And that one is going to be easy to um, skip. By you know, If you um, work your stitches, you might not think that's the stitch that we're going to work into. That stitch is easy to miss. Um, that's why I wanted to mention how you recognize where the half double crochets are so you don't forget to work into this slip stitch here. So we're going to work a half double crochet into the top of the slip stitches from the previous row. Just find the half double crochets and then find the slip stitch right in the middle. And that's where you'll work your half double crochets. Okay, so we just did a slip stitch into the top of this first half double crochet. So now we're going to do a half double crochet into the top of the slip stitch from the previous row. So we'll do yarn over, insert a hook into the slip stitch. And I just wanted to show you, when you insert your hook into the slip stitch, you'll have the front and back loop like you would when you look at the top of any stitch. They look the same. They do have a front and back loop, just like regular stitches. It looks just like a V-stitch, just like any other stitch. So you insert your hook underneath both the front and the back loop. And then, yarn over, we pull up a loop, and we'll have our three loops on the hook. Yarn over and then finish your half double crochet. And then you can see the next stitch is a half double crochet, so we're going to work a slip stitch into that one. And remember, we're not inserting the hook down here where that slanted line is. We're going to insert it just above that, right underneath the stitch, front and back loop. And then you're going to pull a loop through, and then pull that loop right through the loop that was already on the hook, and that's how you do your slip stitch. And then the next stitch is a slip stitch from the previous row. If you're having trouble finding them, just find your half double crochet and look for that stitch right in between. Okay, so we're going to do a half double crochet into the slip stitch. And then the next stitch is a half double crochet, so we want to do a slip stitch into that one. And then half double crochet into the next stitch. And then a slip stitch into the top of the half double crochet. And then a half double crochet into the top of the slip stitch from the first row. And then here's your half double crochet from the previous row. So we do a slip stitch into the top of that one. Last stitch. That was a slip stitch that we did from the previous row. So we want to do a half double crochet into that very last stitch. And you want to make sure that when you insert your hook, you did get both loops of the stitch. And then finish with a half double crochet. Okay, so we started this row with a chain two that counted as a half double crochet. So essentially we started with a half double crochet and we ended the row with a half double crochet. So we're starting and ending the row with the same type of stitch, a half double crochet and ending with a half double crochet. So now let's go ahead and do row three. We're going to chain one, turn our work, we're going to do a slip stitch into the top of the first stitch which is a half double crochet. And then the next stitch was a slip stitch from the previous row. So we're going to do our half double crochet into the top of that. Then, and then you can see that's a half double crochet. So we want to do a slip stitch into the top of that one. And then here's your slip stitch. Do a half double crochet to the top of that. And then here's your half double crochet because you can see the slanted line. So we'll do a slip stitch. And then here's the slip stitch from the previous row. It's just before the next half double crochet where that slanted line is. So do a half double crochet into the top of that stitch. And then you just do that all the way to the end of the row. So we're just going to work slip stitches into the top of the half double crochet, half double crochets into the top of the slip stitches. And if you're having trouble finding the slip stitch, all you need to do is find the two half double crochets and the slip stitch right in the middle. Okay, so we just did a half double crochet, so slip stitch into that. Next stitch. Half double crochet. And this is a half double crochet, so we're doing a slip stitch. And then here's a slip stitch right here. Now remember, 
this here is a chain two. Now remember this stitch right here, that chain two right here, that counted as a half double crochet. So there's a stitch right right before it. That's the slip stitch. So we want to do the half double crochet into the top of this slip stitch before that chain two. That's counting as a half double crochet. So we're going to do a half double crochet into that slip stitch. And then here's the chain two. So into the top chain of the chain two, we'll do a slip stitch. So we started with a slip stitch and we ended row three with a slip stitch. So let's go ahead and do another row. We're going to chain two turn our work in that chain two our turning chain is going to count as our first stitch it will count as a half double crochet so we're not going to work back into that chain since we're counting the turning chain as our first stitch so you can see that the next stitch is a half double crochet because you can see where that line dips down or slants downward so now you want to do a slip stitch into the top of that then a half double crochet into the slip stitch then a slip stitch into the top of the half double crochet and you're just going to do that all the way down working half double crochets into the top of the slip stitches from the previous row and working slip stitches into the top of the half double crochet from the previous row okay so I did a slip stitch into this half double crochet and then we have a slip stitch right here we want to do a half double crochet into that last slip stitch and when you want to make sure that you're inserting your hook underneath both the front and back loop and then pull up a loop you have your three loops for your half double crochet yarn over pull through all three loops so we we started with a chain two which counts as a half double crochet and we ended with a half double crochet and that's how you do the crunch stitch so the next row you would do the chain one, turn your work, and just keep going back and forth. So you repeat row one and two until it's as long as you want it to be. So the crunch stitch is a two row repeat. Row three would be a repeat of row one, and row four would be a repeat of row two. And you just keep doing that until it's as long as you want it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the camera on pause. I'm going to work up a few more rows. I'm going to go ahead and work up a few more rows, and I'll be right back. Okay, so while I had the camera on pause, I went ahead and continued to work some more rows of the crunch stitch. I have a total of 10 rows now, and that's what it looks like. It has a really nice texture, and then I did do a sample in pink yarn just to show you how it would look if you did it with a different color. And that is how you do the crunch stitch, and that is the stitch that we're going to use to make the baby cardigan. So you can see, um, with the cardigan, I did use the baby Burnett sport yarn so the stitches look smaller on the cardigan than in the samples because I used a four ply yarn and this was the Burnett sport yarn with a smaller crochet hook you know that way you can kind of see how it will look different if you use a different weight of yarn or different size crochet hooks so I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial today on how to do the crunch stitch that way you'll be ready to start part two when I post this video which will be coming up soon so I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial today where I showed you how to make the crunch stitch to get ready to make part two of the baby cardigan so I want to thank you for watching today and I hope you have a great day